All right, thank you, Joe. Let's return to our other top story tonight. That is the Washington primary, and we begin with the closely watched race for Washington's third congressional seat. You see it here right now. Incumbent Republican Jamie Herrera Butler sits in the number two spot with about 24% of the vote. That is behind Democrat Marie Glusenkamp Perez, who has 31%, nearly 32 there. Trump endorsed Joe Kent, a retired Green Beret, currently sitting in third. That is with the Associated Press reporting a little over half of the votes counted, so keep that in mind. Herrera Butler faced a tough challenge from fellow Republicans after she voted to impeach former President Trump, but it looks like that will not keep her out of the race in November. Let's bring in Catherine Cook, Addy election headquarters in Vancouver. Catherine. Guys, elections officials tell us this was the race that brought out voters here in Clark County. It's important to note these results are preliminary and votes are continued to be counted. But at this point, it appears come November, it will be a Democrat and a Republican on the ballot for Washington's third congressional district. And then there were two. Preliminary results from Washington's primary have Democrat Marie Glusenkamp Perez and Republican Jamie Herrera Butler moving on in the race for Washington's third congressional district. Perez was in the lead with the first votes counted Tuesday night. What a relief to see that voters are showing up. They are not falling for these big money lies that are coming through. Um, they are showing up for election integrity. They are showing up for women's rights. And they are showing up for small business owners working the trades like me. Incumbent Jamie Herrera Butler is in second in her push for a seventh term. She spent Tuesday afternoon waving signs, hoping for last minute support. I've been able to put the needs of folks here first. Even when I've had presidents call me and say, we want you to vote this way, or party leaders lean on me and say, you got to do this. I always come back to know the folks in this district are my boss. And none of the candidates running can say that. It's going to be a spicy general election. We asked political strategist Rebecca Tweed to weigh in on the results as they may play out in November. We're really going to be seeing who runs the most to the middle. And I think the national narrative will play a big role in what happens, right? With having a primary in August and a general, you know, just a couple months away, there's no wiggle room. There's no way to walk things back. We have serious issues like choice issues on the ballot, gun issues. A lot of those are going to have an immediate impact. Uh, and Herrera Butler, you know, is going to have to run a little bit progressive if she wants to take Perez. The Washington primary attracted a huge voter turnout in Clark County. Auditor Greg Kimsey estimated 40 to 45 percent. That's about 15 percent more than most primaries. It's fantastic to see people engage in the process. He says without a doubt, the third congressional district race drew the added interest. Voter Ali Smith noticed the uptick, too. I'm not sure what it is. I'm hoping that people are just more passionate about democracy. And that is what it's all about. Rounding out the top four vote getters in this race, Republicans Joe Kent and Heidi St. John right now are in third and fourth place. Back to you. All right. Thanks, Catherine. One of the other 10 Republicans to vote for Trump's impeachment, Congressman Dan Newhouse, taking a look at Congressional District 4. This runs north to south through central Washington. You can see Newhouse has a narrow lead there. 27 percent of the vote. Democrat Doug White in second with 26 percent. Trump endorsed Lauren Culp not making the top two is in third as it stands right now. All right. More key races to get to for U.S. Senate longtime incumbent Patty Murray. Finishing on top, the AP projecting she will face Republican challenger Tiffany Smiley in November. Smiley, a nurse and veterans advocate from Pasco, rising to number two in a very crowded field. And in the race for Secretary of State, Steve Hobbs, who was appointed to the job last fall, has a significant lead. The question seems to be who's going to snag that number two spot. Anderson and Hagland are very close in percentages there. And let's head to Clark County, where a sales tax increase for public safety is on the ballot, including purchasing body worn cameras for sheriff's deputies. That's known as Proposition 11. Right now, it appears a significant majority have voted yes. You can find updated results throughout the night and many more races on our website. Just head to KGW.com elections.